and I'm going to be the webinar moderator today. And like Bob said, thank you for joining um, to today's webinar, the in Implement a Digital Workflow with Spectral Data. Before we begin, I just wanted to go over a few housekeeping points. Uh, because of the number of people that are attending today's webinar, we will keep everyone muted. During the webinar, if you have questions, please use the questions function on the GoToWebinar panel. Uh, towards the end of the webinar, we will have time for a short Q&A session, and that's when we'll be able to go over those questions you had. Finally, this webinar will be recorded, uh, so you will receive a link so that you can review the webinar at your convenience, and you'll receive that link tomorrow. Again, um, Bob Karpowitz is with us today. Thank you, Bob, for joining, and I'll let you uh, take over. That's great. Thank you, Megan. All right, so uh, just briefly, uh, who are we? Uh, well, Pantone and x -Rite have been together now for uh, over 10 years. Uh, we bring together the art and science of color to help make color critical decisions easier at every stage of the workflow, uh, from inspiration to realization. We serve designers and manufacturers alike through customized integrated consulting services and color management tools that ensure that color imagined is the color achieved. We're global. We have 900 employees worldwide, 17 offices and production facilities in 75 countries across the globe, and we have 578 dealer partners. Um, we're in just about everything where color is important, automotive, cosmetics, toys, uh, books, magazines, uh, marketing, footwear. Um, so wherever color needs to be consistent and has to match, um, we're there. So what we do is we help stakeholders make color critical decisions at every stage of the workflow. With an infinite number of color standards to choose from, selecting the perfect color can sometimes be a daunting task. Now imagine communicating that specific color through a diverse supply chain of producers and manufacturers located throughout the globe. This is where X-Rite Pantone comes in. We help stakeholders make color critical decisions at every stage of the workflow and make it possible for our customers to communicate color across a complex supply chain. So why is color so important? Well, Color accounts for 65% of purchasing decisions. It's the single greatest influence on consumer decision making. It can mean the difference between sold out and on sale. Color accounts also for 60% of the acceptance or rejection in production. It is more critical than ever to get the right color and to get the color right. Uh, I have a personal example. Uh, I had a client, uh, they were redoing a hospital uh, check-in and it was a fair sized medical center that was remodeling and uh, they chose their new branding colors from a Pantone PMS book, an ink book, and told all their architectural vendors which color they wanted for carpeting, upholstery, wall, uh, paint, plastic, uh, and so on. And when the materials came in, nothing matched. Well, a PMS book is for ink specification. Ink has pigments designed to match in daylight 5000 light, not fluorescent or LED office light, or even uh, other kinds of daylight. Ink pigments are different from carpet dyes and pigments in upholstery and plastic and wall paint. These suppliers of the, the materials took their best shot and matched under D65 or incandescent or whatever light was hanging in the office and approved that. And further, they had all had different PMS books of different ages perhaps even none at all, relying on a coloring provider to just give them PMS 361. The whole remodeling project had to be redone. So these are some examples of the range of the 361 uh, that my client received in the finished goods. The physical sample was actually a half dozen related physical samples that each vendor used to create what was an acceptable or an attainable match to them personally, without any reference back to the hospital waiting room designer's original preference or to any of the other partners who are contributing to that hospital waiting room. So, I've got a question for you. How many of you are running into a similar problem? Um, we'll have a little poll pop up here and uh, I'll give you a couple minutes to do that. And I think if you have any uh, issues, you can raise your hand.
Okay. Well, thank you. Okay. So why does color management seem so difficult? Well, there's just uh, one, uh, one example. We mentioned earlier different suppliers from different parts of the world, sometimes using different raw materials, can introduce error into the final color delivery. Uh, the customer's expectation is what a clothing company will do. Uh, the cust excuse me. The customer's expectation is that a clothing company will de deliver consistent color, and that the, their clothes will match their accessories. This is how brands attract and keep customers. Understanding the different ways to color uh, is uh, the key to controlling color. In this example, the color of the shoes sole, tongue, laces. Uh, everything else were designed to match to the same pink color standard. The difficult cast of uh, task of color matching becomes significantly more complex with the introduction of additional material substrates. X-ray Pantone provides the proper balance of tools and accuracy to connect the entire workflow from design through production. So there's a visual versus uh, digital workflow, and basically there are different stages. Um, so color evaluation processes can take many forms, but this diagram shows the various levels of color evaluation maturity. The level of each color evaluation maturity ultimately determines how accurate and efficient a company can be at reaching the correct color formulation or match. Working from left to right, you can see the progression of maturity a customer will go through as they become more proficient in color evaluation. The first stage we call visual, and usually a standard and submission are viewed at a desk or by a window. There's no standard illumination or environment. They're winging it really, very similar to what we saw in the, the hospital waiting room case I mentioned earlier. The second stage is visual and assist, or visual plus assist. The evaluator realizes the power of a physical standard being viewed under controlled lighting. The light box will provide consistent illumination, allowing consistent visual evaluation over time and even between observers. The third stage we call quality assurance. So you have physical standards are associated with digital spectral data as measured and QC'd by spectrophotometers. This allows precise color control throughout the manufacturing process, but typically it's limited to just one site. What we have with a connected workflow is shared digital data from the cloud, allowing multiple component vendors to target the same color across multiple materials, materials and coloration processes. So, poll question number two, how do you currently evaluate and communicate color? Would you put yourself in the category of visual, visual plus assist, measured with no external communication, or digital workflow? And we'll open the polls for that. Okay, thanks. All right, so what are the benefits of a digital workflow? Well, you can see that here we've got four different stages before everything gets back to the specifier to see what the final product is. On the top tier, you see how things can wander without a digital workflow. And on the bottom tier, you see how things are more uh, consistent all the way through. And so let's just go through the steps. At the beginning, uh, the specifier, Joe, picks a really cool blue for a new product launch. Then Ted goes and finds a color in his CAD system that looks pretty close to Joe's uh, preferred color. Nancy prints out Ted's color spec on her uh, inkjet and matches it perfectly. Uh, then Jack uses uh, Nancy's colorant and makes it look really good if you hold it just right. So you don't get good results that way. Things tend to wander. There's nothing to monitor or anchor the color all the way through that process. In a digital workflow, everybody at each step gets the same digital target and have to comply to the same measured tolerances. And this results in consistent color communi excuse me, communication through the process. 
So instead of going back and forth, rejecting at the formulation level, reflecting, reflecting at the manufacturer level, right? We end up wasting all this time shipping physical color samples back and forth. Lost in the shuffle are the breakdowns in communication and the introduction of error with, uh, within the process, leading to color variation between production runs and components. So what is at the heart of a digital workflow? Well, it's spectral data. The spectral data is the fingerprint of a color. If the curves of the product match the curves of the standard, there is no risk of the colors not matching in other light sources. So with digital standards, you have one version of the truth available to all partners in the supply chain. Physical standards, no matter how well made, all have some variants in order to make them affordably and manufacturable. Also, once created, the physical standards are subject to mishandling and environmental degradation. Where the digital standard remains consistent, physical standards start with some variants and undergo physical changes as they're handled. By sharing precise digital data residing on the cloud, the only variation in readings should come from the inter-instrument agreement of the spectrophotometers in your supply chain, not the improper handling of physical samples. So the digital standard now becomes the real target, not as a tattered paper swatch or worn plastic chip that has been faded by the sun from design through specification to manufacturing. In these two examples, you see the error stack on the left, which is typically what you would see in a manufacturing location where um, you've got uh, final measured product is going to be a certain delta E from what the master physical standard was or the shipped physical standard um, and, and different locations are gonna be different. So you could end up with a total variation over six delta E if everybody is left to wander through the woods on their own. Because um, with something like Pantone Live, uh, everybody's looking at that same digital standard, referring back to that, everybody is much closer together. So through uh, manufacturing, maybe your total variation on this plastic bottle is now gonna be two and a half. So that's a big advantage um, and probably would have helped my hospital friends. So. So how does Pantone Live really work, right? So Pantone Live works in three separate environments. We have market segments with their own coloration technologies and materials that need some specific things. We have plastic coatings and textile production. We've got print and packaging. And of course, you have design, the people at the top, the beginning of that, that uh, process, right? So the Pantone Live designs for designers, um, you'll see how colors change in various print conditions on the screen. Uh, the data is accessible um, from the Pantone Visualizer app, so you can anticipate what the substrates and what the environments are going to be. And it is available through Adobe Illustrator via plugin. The Pantone Live production print and packaging uh, is for uh, uh, packaging converters, so the people who are making the boxes or printing the labels. Right, and the Pantone data can be coming from uh, our ink formulation software. Uh, will be native in our uh, or available to be native in our um, X-ray IntelliTrack scanning spectrophotometer. It's in our Color IQC uh, uh, quality control software, in our Color Cert verification software, available in our Exact Spectro, the 450 uh, spectro densitometer used in the printing industry, and we connect to a lot of third-party applications. The new thing that we've got now is that we are now entering into the uh, industrial world, plastic coatings and textile, right? So it's for color producers and manufacturers. Again, going goes into iMatch, goes into Color IQC, connects to the X-Rite CI7X series spect benchtop spectrophotometers and our handheld sphere uh, X-Rite CI6X spectrophotometers. So Pantone Live can improve color speech uh, uh, um, specification. And here's how. So design and production licenses are available to connect all participants across the workflow. All colors update and populate automatically into your software. 
There's no need to buy spectral data separately for each color, as uh, we have in the past with the uh, TCX sample we have here. And this eliminates the uncertainty of how manufacturers buy and store data. Uh, so this way, there's some reliability that you are uh, using the same, um, the same data. So the Pantone Live uh, Libraries for Designers, again, a plug-in for Adobe Illustrator. Um, syncs with our uh, fashion home and interior library in a, uh, and designers can specify and design files with our TCX colors. The specified colors are communicated to color matching partners, uh, master batchers, dye manufacturers, and uh, production pulls down the specified values from the formulation on uh, QC hardware and software. So Pantone Live in production it integrates with Color IQC, Color iMatch, and Xtrite Instruments to provide the following improvements in your processes. Seamless color specification and communication across this uh, product supply chain. Access to digital color values within IQC and iMatch to develop production sample and full production runs. And formulation to spectral values, which is very important, that increases the accuracy of color in production earlier on in the process that maximizes your tolerancing. So these are uh, the physical side of what we have with Pantone Live. On the left is our fashion and home library for textiles. Uh, we've got the um, uh, fashion home and interior cotton uh, TCX and nylon bright libraries. Uh, all have been measured with the Benchop Sphere 7800. Uh, on the right side, you have the PMS library. So this would have greatly helped our, our folks in uh, the hospital waiting room. So we have the Pantone PMS measured both with a handheld sphere and with the handheld 45-0. So gets both the packaging market and the industrial market. And then we've put those Pantone colors into plastic uh, to use in three different libraries. Uh, one would be for the handheld sphere. Uh, and then we have on the bench top sphere both with a UV, UV calibrated um, uh, library and a UV cut or UV excluded library. So you have lots of options here to pick that fits exactly what your process and materials are. All of this um, fits in with our software, uh, Color iMatch, which is the formulation software for uh, most of our production uh, uh, formulation software uh, customers. Um, then we've got Color IQC, which uh, is our is our um, QC software. Sorry, uh, and uh, it, it's facilitated through Net Profiler, and that Net Profiler uh, software is going to uh, connect uh, all of the instruments uh, together so that they are as close in inter-instrument agreements as possible. And they hook up to these spectrotometers, our CI7X series, the 7800, the 7860, and the 7600 bench tops, very high accuracy, very high inter-instrument agreement. Our portable CI6X handheld sphere spectrotometers, um, and the exact uh, 450 spectro densitometers, which are used in the printing world. On top of all this, we've got um, uh, light boxes, this gives you the visual confirmation that the process uh, has worked. And you can see standard and batch next to each other in CI speci CIE specified illuminants. So in summary, the Pantone Live in production integrates with Color IQC, Color iMatch software, and X-Rite instrumentation solutions to provide the following improvements. Seamless color specification and communication across the production supply chain, access to digital color values within IQC and iMatch to develop production sample and full production runs. Formulation to spectral values increases the accuracy of color production earlier on the process and maximizing tolerancing. So are there any questions? Thank you, Bob. Yes, if you have any questions, please go ahead and type them into the questions uh, panel on the on the side on the GoToWebinar panel. 
We do have one. Um, the first question was, I assume Pantone Live could be used with your color cert software. Uh, yes, correct? it does. That is correct. Uh, it was mentioned earlier on, but we didn't, uh, and I should have put that in later in the process too. Okay. Any other questions? Um, I'll give everyone just a minute if they have any to type in. Bob, it looks like your presentation is very thorough and you covered off on everything. <laughs> well, very kind. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a difference between setting up a measured standard versus one that's already measured? Well, so uh, I'm assuming what the uh, questioner is talking about is if uh, you measured with your spectrophotometer uh, a sample that you wanted and you sent that uh, now digital spectral curve off to, uh, say, a colorant provider, uh, yeah, you do a pretty good match, but know that there is going to be uh, some difference between your spectrophotometer and their spectrophotometer. So even if you have the same exact, um, excuse the pun, same exact uh, spectrophotometer models, they could be at different parts of the interinstrument inter agreement. So if you have a, an instrument that's a 0.2 delta E uh, interinstrument agreement, that means interinstrument agreement with the master. So uh, it is possible that you could have two instruments that are uh, in, within uh, specific, specified uh, interinstrument agreement that will be 0.4 apart because they'd be on opposite ends of that. And so there begins to wander a little bit. So basically what you do with uh, digital standards are you've cut that possibility of interinstrument agreement in half. Um, and the real uh, value of that comes if it's a complex supply chain. So if you're just dealing with one color and provider going back and forth, you're, you specify and produce and you had, have a color and provider, uh, then you're, you know, you, you could do that with these two instruments because there'll be a reasonable inter-instrument agreement and you'll have a consistent results. It gets really complicated when you think of that sneaker example or the hospital waiting room example, when you have people who are in different parts of uh, the industry, you know, they're providing uh, cotton laces, the, the leather uh, uh, tongue, the, the rubber uh, sole, all this has to be the same color. They deal with different uh, uh, issues. And so to now say, okay, I'm gonna measure with my spectrophotometer and send it off to 15 different places. Now the differences between each of these are gonna, could be more apparent. I, I hope that answers the question. Thank you, Bob. Um, let me see here. Do we need to purchase color libraries separately? I'm not sure the question is, uh, so, Color, uh, you, if you get Pantone Live, you will get the entire library. Uh, so in each of those three dis, uh, uh, families that I mentioned. So if you're in design, uh, you'll get all the colors uh, that we've mentioned in the in the Pantone Live uh, slide earlier that showed, uh, you know, the PMS, the, uh, you know, you'll get all of that stuff uh, for design or for uh, production. Why is a spectral curve required? Because a spectral curve is really a measurement of how a material interacts with light. Uh, so if we uh, say it, uh, in opposition to spectral curves, here's an LAB. Well, the LAB has some conditions attached to it. This is how a color looks in uh, D6510 degree. Uh, so that would be, um, so you wouldn't be able to see um, uh, the effect of metamerism. So metasm, metamerism could be a very big deal. Excuse me just a second. Uh, metamerism is a very big issue, uh, especially when you have multiple materials um, where the color appearance will shift depending on the light source. So a good example is if you put your black socks on in the morning and at lunch you notice that one of them is actually blue and it's because the incandescent light that you had at your bedside 
doesn't have much blue energy. So in that viewing condition, both those socks are black. The same thing happens if you're trying to get the cotton laces and the rubber sole and the leather tongue of that sneaker all to be the same color pink, that you may match an LAB, uh, but without spectral curve, you're not going to know if you have a good spectral match so that you reduce the effects of metamorphism. I hope that answers the question. What level or difference of delta E can a consumer see? Um, so um, typically, if it's a delta E CMC, a delta E CMC of 1.0, is about where the human eye sees objectionable color difference. Um, CMC and the other elliptical tolerances, uh, like 2000 and uh, Delta E94, um, all came from, um, excuse me one second. <coughs> excuse me, the allergies are kicking in. So all these elliptical tolerances now are based on human color perception, where the standard Delta E was not. And so a 1.0 is uh, a difference where you would not sew a sleeve onto um, the body of a jacket. There'd be objectionable color difference where they meet. Um, I've known people that can see uh, 0.2 delta E CMC. And so the whole idea of whether you can see it as a shade difference or whether it's objectionable, it's about one where people would say it doesn't match. I uh, hope that answers the question. If you have a spectro that is net profiled and the other is not, will that make a problem? It could, or the uh, the other spectro might fall into that same range. What net profiler does is give you the assurance that they're within a specified um, inner instrument agreement. So um, you're just taking a chance. Um, if it's a new instrument and just come out of the box, uh, chances are it's it's in spec and it's going to be uh, really close, but everything changes. Uh, we typically recommend that the instruments are certified on an annual basis if you're in a complex supply chain, because you want to make sure that everything is uh, up to snuff, that you're within specification. Net Profile allows you to um, contain that instrument drift over the period of the year in between certifications. So net profiler just is an insurance uh, that yes, you are within spec if you're, if you're using on a weekly basis or a bi-weekly basis. And then this is the last question. Uh, it's, you mentioned PMS books for plastics. Would this be for plastic packaging films? and then they just provided a little more detail. Meaning with the spectral data for a PMS color in the solid coated book be different than the spectral data for a PMS color that is be printed on plastic film. Okay, so I mentioned plastic, so there's two things going on here, I just wanna make sure. Um, so the PMS the colors that we have in plastic are for solid color plastic. So if it's a if it's a uh, colored film, um, you know, if you're thinking of something like a, a, a trash bag, you know, that forest green trash bag, it has to be a PMS color. That's what that library is. So there's a slightly different PMS um, uh, or a spectral target for PMS in plastic and in ink. So the um, what you have with the PMS ink, if you're talking about printing on uh, plastic, you would use the, uh, the PMS ink library that's going to get you better results. If you have a follow-up, can you, can you uh, uh, if I haven't answered the question properly, uh, please type it in. Okay. It looks like that was the last question, Bob. So I okay. want to thank you again for taking the time today and to everyone that attended. Thank you very much uh, for attending. Thank you. Yeah, I um, do appreciate your time. No, sorry. Yeah. yeah. No, 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 go ahead. And I just wanted to note that we do have the slides here. So if you are looking for more information, um, if some of your questions weren't answered, you know, feel free to reach out to us. Uh, if you respond back to um, the email I send tomorrow, that comes directly to me. So that's another way you can get some of your questions answered. 
So thanks again and uh, have a great day. Thank you very much, everybody.